Good morning, brothers, to a very chilly day on the homestead. We woke up this morning, 14 degrees with the mother of all storms coming tonight. We're supposed to have a 100% chance of snow tomorrow. I've got some super skookum new chains for the Super Duty that I haven't fitted yet. We're gonna do that today and just kind of go over some winter preparedness and get ready for this big storm. I've got a new job, uh, apparently, my new part-time job is uh, pulling people out of the irrigation ditch in front of my house. <laughs> Running back and forth doing that, but I don't mind. I, I enjoy that. And no, I never charge for it. Never have, never will. It's just something that I enjoy doing. It's, uh, it's uh, I'm laying up treasures in heaven. Cat's got a secret security code you can punch in that way no one can steal it very good feature indeed urban east coast man has been in the comments of late giving me a hard time about why would anyone want to live in such a godforsaken place well, you see, West Coast man likes the adversity. An East Coast, urban East Coast man, he's not able to comprehend this because of his DNA. Now, all of the brave adventuring souls moved out West long ago, and we are all the descendants of those hardy men and women, whereas the less brave and less hardy remained. And that's you. Goodness, that's not dangerous. I'll drop this blower off here. Pick up the bucket. Need to dig the old firewood getter out. I'm beginning to think that the compact track loader might just be my number one pick for the first thing I would get. It is handier than a pocket and a shirt. Wrong pile. This is the one we're pulling off of.
cordwood. This is what freedom looks like. Why do you think they want your wood stoves? I think that'll just about do it. Isn't this a spiffy jacket? Fun fact, this jacket is a replica of a design that was done by the Swedish Falls Raven, Yals Raven, or I guess they say it. It was originally designed for the original Polar Explorers. It's a wax cotton, and they did a reproduction of the exact same jacket. I think the cut and everything's the same. Perfect jacket for the Arctic environment. And pretty smart looking if I do admit myself. Oh, and the hat, sadly, no longer produced. But this, in, in this cold weather, goodness, it's cold, my ears are freezing. It's got a zipper on the back. And I think it's down, check this out. Now granted, it is the ugliest hat I think I've ever seen, but it is good. Look at that, it covers your ears. Sadly, no longer produced. Mrs. W is always on the lookout on eBay. She snatches them up whenever they come online there. Maybe they'll reproduce it again. That ought to keep us going for a few days. I'll leave it undercover. I'm gonna send Jack down here, get a few loads. He needs something to do today, doesn't he? Goodness, look how beautiful that water is, crystal clear. I wonder if you could catch any fish right now. We're off like a dirty shirt. I know, Mama, I know you're cold. We'll get your fire going here. Some say firewood's too much work, and it is a lot of work, no doubt. But how do you heat your house? Well, you oil or gas or coal, I guess, in some places, but you gotta pay someone to do it, right? You gotta pay taxes on that money. You gotta go work. Do a job and everybody's got their hands in your pocket taking percentage of your labor. So we're all working. But when you do your firewood, as I'm always fond of saying, you receive, you're the recipient of all the benefits. No one benefits outside for your lab, from your labor except for you. Plus, you don't have to have a gym membership. You see? That's the piece we were looking for. And of course we'll be using the top down method. I know a lot of you guys have seen this, but if you haven't, Mama Kitty, that's not helpful. Take your biggest pieces, put them in the bottom. Doesn't matter how big they are, even great big ones like this. Now you're gonna need some medium sized pieces, about half the size of this right here about four of them. Go across. And we'll do three. Three or four. Yeah, those are a bit, a bit big there. And 
build your small pallet. Keep them close together. And as we know, as the coals, you light this fire and it'll be good for hours. You don't have to come back and check on it. We'll get it going, Mama. Hold on. After 15 years, my torch igniter quit working. Time for a new one. Man, I love this skid steer. I don't know how I got on without it. push some of this snow and water out of here and then we'll bring the truck in and we'll get going on those super skookum chains. And that has the sound of a big Cummins. Indeed it is. Surprised it even started to get here. Well, I'm not surprised it started. I'm just surprised that the front end allowed it to get here. With its ball joints all worn out and all. Looks like Mrs. W made it home. She went out for some last minute supplies before the storm hit. How are the roads? Fine. How are your new tires? I bought brand new tire chains for the Super Duty, but I haven't tried them on yet. So we're gonna try them on. Now, every professional homeowner knows that tire chains are definitely not created equal. And you wanna buy the good ones. Now, with that being said, if you're still a young man and you haven't got it out of your system to put big giant lift kits and foolish giant tires on your truck, don't invest in good chains because when you get older like me, you'll put away that nonsense and you'll leave them relatively stock. So if you're at that point, I'll show you what to get. Good grief, we got the Gordian knot again right from the factory. When it comes to tire chains for a big heavy truck like a one ton, three quarter ton, this is what you want. Big side links. Huge alloy, alloy crossbars. Do you see that chain right there, the square links? That's a hardened high quality alloy. That's not gonna break and that's not gonna wear out on you. You've got cams here. This is pretty ubiquitous now with all ch uh, tire chains and how this works is once you get them on, they'll give you a supplied tool and you rotate the cam and that will help tighten them up. I don't know if that's a great design feature, or, but it does give you a lot more versatility. If you'd switch tire sizes, it does sometimes bridge the gap and makes your chains go a little bit further. Don't buy those cheap chains, those little skinny ones. I know it's tempting because they're a fourth of the price, but the last thing a professional homeowner wants is to be a prepared-minded guy, slip off in the ditch, can't get out, and in front of your wife have to have another man pull you out of the ditch. We were up the mountain about 10 minutes from here snow biking last weekend. And one of the guys had a dually, which are ter dual wheels are terrible in snow or slippery conditions, if you didn't know. He had some light duty chains and a trailer, and he put them on, and a couple slips, and the chains were ruined. They just, it just snapped all the links, just worthless. So you don't save anything by doing that, and you can cause a lot of damage to your truck. This breaks, and you get a chain flopping, it'll tear up the side of your truck. The cost of repairing that, or perish the thought if it gets in the uh, axles or roundup, breaks your brake lines. I mean, lots of problems can come from cheap chains. You do not save any money by doing that. You'll wish you had. Easiest way to do your chains is in your shop. Jack up your wheels. What's the chance the old Harbor Freight will lift it one ton by itself? Usually you have to use two. 
no problem. These Daytonas are pretty good jack so far. One thing to bear in mind when you're laying your chains out, these little connector doohickeys here, these go up. You don't want these facing the tire because they can gouge and tear up your treads and your cams obviously go to the outside. Looks like the old fire's going good. Drape your chains over the top, put your truck in neutral, that way you can roll the tire. You see, this is called pre-planning. You do these things in the comfort of your shop, then you find out if you're lacking or missing something or something doesn't fit. The last place you want to find out that you have overlooked something is on the side of a road in the middle of the night at 10 below zero with your family in the car away from home. Double check, you don't have any twists and always hook the back first. Make sure that you have the same reveal all the way around here that your side chains are similar. I don't like to have the hanging, the links hanging. And there are lots of different connection methods, but you know, we're gonna rely upon our bungees. This sort of thing here, that jingle jangling, I don't like that. You can put, if you don't wanna cut it off, uh, if you wanna have some more options in case you get larger tires, you can, um, leave them on and put a bungee on there but once we get it all fitted up here and I know that I have what I want I'll probably cut those off yep those look pretty good or not because I do have these aired down to 15 psi that's a good point too uh, for traction now with the chains I won't have to do that but I just run them like this I think that that actually looks pretty good this is such a good fit actually that I could, I wouldn't even need to put rubber butt stretchies on here. Don't forget to put that with your kit. Keep it in your truck or with your chain. Just make sure you have it. It's not a bad idea to put a bungee, a couple bungees on here. Throw those in your kit. You know, I, I have ran them without bungees, but they, they, they are a little bit quieter. They seem to, seem to hold a little bit better with the bungee cords on it. Just do crisscross applesauce there. Whatever you have to. And back through itself, it'll capture. Can I get that on there right? I would always forget how to do I don't think that looks right. I'm gonna need a trucker to tell me how to do that. Professional homeowners, they don't know about truckers type of things, so I'll have to go watch a YouTube video. And that's about all there is to it. This is a little bit close to the wheel. It'd be nice to have that a little bit centered, but I've all I've found that once you start, once your rolls start running, they seem to kind of work themselves out. That's not a big deal. My granddad, he was a clever guy. He never had a four wheel drive. He was super frugal, and when he bought his he bought a new, his first new truck, he worked at the Ford dealership, and they gave him a good deal. It was a 1977 Ford F250, orange with a tan interior, two wheel drive. When he brought that home. I was so disappointed he didn't get four-wheel drive because we used to elk hunt in that. We'd always, always, hunting Eastern Oregon, had to put chains on. Uh, but he didn't mind. He's like, no, I'm not, paying, uh, I'm not paying the extra money and I'm not hauling that extra weight in that front axle around uh, just so I can put it in four-wheel drive once a year at elk hunting. So <laughs> he actually built, um, and I was been wanting to do the same thing. Having your chains, a place to put your chains, is always tough. I hate to throw stuff in the back of the truck sliding around or for someone to steal and you definitely don't want them uh, in your cab because if you're getting a wreck or a rollover you know you got all that steel running around there that's definitely a no bueno. What he did is he built a three-quarter marine grade plywood box that his chains fit in with a latch on it that just opened up and he went underneath and he strapped it on he bolted it up to the side of the frame rail they hung on the side of the frame rail like like a saddle tank like a gas tank would and they were always there and always ready to go and i thought that was the smartest thing i i, I don't want a wood a plywood box under there but if i could find something that was about the size of a mailbox that was aluminum or stainless they could go underneath there and, and some big old stainless clamps around there and bolt that to the side of the frame and have those chains under there all the time where you could crawl into there and get them and just put them there and forget about it. it was a pretty cool deal. It was a pretty cool deal. That, I thought we thought that was pretty smart. Granddad, he was a heck of a mechanic, man. I, he, one time he had an old truck uh, and he spun a crank bearing 
uh, in Ala I think he was in Alaska. I think they were up in Alaska. I, I was, I think I was there. I, I was uh, like one year or two years old when we drove up the Alcan up to Alaska and he spun a bearing on that truck. He went to the parts store, or he, he crawled underneath there, pulled the oil pan down, took the crank caps off of the, the main bearing. I don't know if it was a rod or it was a main. Had the tools, went to the parts store, got an oversized bearing, put a bearing in there and off it went. Now who does that on the side of a road? I mean, that's way, way beyond professional homeowner grade right there, <laughs> but that's what he did. I did though, I, I did have my moment in the sun. I had a 78 Bronco, was coming uh, from Boise, Idaho back to Portland and throw, it, throw up bearing went out, it was a manual. And I changed the throw up bearing on the side of the road. I had to pull the transfer, I did it by myself in the dark. So uh, it's amazing what you can do if you have to. Thanks for watching. May God bless you and your families. Please keep us in your prayers, and we'll see you all on the next video.